Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 55 of the In From Japan podcast, the podcast where we talk about the latest news on Japan-developed games and other things in relation to them. Available on YouTube and in most places, podcasts can be found. As always, I'm your host, Errol Moss, and with me is my co-host, the Phenomenon from Suriname, Jason Corner. Hey, hey. And uh, before we get started with our uh, with our games we've been playing, we're actually some quick housekeeping. Is our two new mascots, Sunika the Nekomata and Ichigo the Phantom Thief Shiba Inu, have been revealed with uh, art by our friend Racy B. Uh, go check out her stuff. I'll put a link in the uh, description, and th- there's a link on our. Twitter post about our mascots as well. Yeah, it's uh, looking really cool. Uh, it's better than I could have ever imagined. Um, I mean, we are kind of bootlegged Pokemon now, so there's that. If you can't say that, no, they're 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 in in from Japan mascots. They're not <laughs> bootleg anything. <laughs> Nintendo will never know. <laughs> Dude, the I told you about yeah, Nob, he actually commented on uh he if you guys don't know who Nob is, he is also goes by Doug Dinsdale on Twitter. He's one of the original translators for the Pokemon games and he said he commented he's like the art style is impeccable. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Oh, no. That's really cool. <laughs> yeah. Uh but anyways, so go check out those two little guys. They're great. They'll be in the thumbnail actually, because they're they're in the in the new thumbnail oh, board, cool, so cool, you'll cool. see them. Um. But uh, moving on to the Japanese games we've been playing, <laughs> as we usually do, I have been playing East Nine. Finally, a new game. You make it sound like you were <laughs> suffering all those months. I was just waiting for something new to come out. I mean, no, it's just like it was. It was kind of hard to talk about something like, oh, I should probably play something for the podcast, and like it would be like, okay, I can play this. And I'm like, yes, I do have an expanding backlog. I realize this, but it was. It's just like, I don't know. I like being current. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Anyways, East Nine, great. The demo was not the best example of gameplay. Well, it well. It was a good example of gameplay, but it threw you in, like, way too hard. Besides the 10-minute time limit, you had, like, all your attacks and all your abilities. Not not all of them, necessarily, but most of them, at least. And, you know, you gradually build those up mm-hmm. as you progress through the story. So it just felt weird. The demo is not the best representation of the full game. I feel. I think they do. You know, well, they do, that, they do that a lot with demos where they just let you loose with uh, kind of a full suite of the abilities. just So you can have a taste yeah. of where you'll eventually be instead of how you start out of. Uh-huh. I feel like the demo for East 9 specifically didn't explain stuff all that well. Mm. So that didn't help either. And then, I mean, story-wise... Because gameplay-wise, I'm having a lot of fun. There's, uh, you know, it's a 3D East games. There's your basic attack, and then you have your hold R1 and press one of the face buttons to use one of your skills. And then you can switch between different party members. I only have the second party member right now, but it's still pretty cool. Um, The only thing that kind of annoys me is there's no real and maybe there is later there's no dash or like midair dash or recovery uh command so when you get knocked down you have to kind of kind of wait wait a second or two um don't you use the run button to get back up that's dodge that's dodge and sprint i mean like a like a dash dash like an actual like fast because cause uh, the sprinting, I feel like, isn't that fast. Um, So far, well, I'm playing East 8. I'll get into that later. Um, I don't think there is, like, a dash dash in the East series. 
So I think you're out of luck. Yeah, maybe I just need to get maybe I just need to get good. But like I I've been trying to get better at dodging and blocking since it's the uh, what's it called the flat it does the flash reaction Fl flash, flash dodge and, and flash, flash move and flash guard yeah yeah which it 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 really depends on the enemy for me <laughs> yeah it seems like yeah 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 because you have to get that timing down for each individual enemy. And one of the bosses, actually, <laughs> one of the early bosses, it was really funny because I don't remember if this was in East 8, but you you, rec you can recover health just by standing in the same place, just yeah. by idling. It, it depends, though. And so, you have to be in an open field. Oh, no, you didn't like, have to be in an open field. No, not for this. No, because, well, in like, East you can 8, do this you during battle. Uh, you don't regenerate health. Yeah, during battle or in a dungeon. No, you no. This was during battle and in a dun this was both. <laughs> so oh, there's okay. this one boss who, who he uh, he did this thing where he made the ground kind of he made basically he made walls pop up from the ground at one point when you got his health low enough. Mm -hmm. And I was low on health, so I was like, I wonder. So I'm just standing behind a wall. While he and his, the other attack he throws is blocked by the walls he he brings up, so I'm basically just standing there, and the wall and if the wall comes up from under you, it doesn't damage you; it just moves you. Mm. So so, <laughs> for a little bit of the time, <laughs> I was just kind of standing there waiting for my health to recover because I got I ran out of uh, health recovery items. <laughs> it was pretty funny. The boss himself was pretty fun, though. Like, other than that, it was still fun. Especially when you actually managed to do the flash move and flash guard right. And, as I said, uh, the story is... I'm not really that invested in the story right now. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of like... Hey, you... Like, these, these people... This army is sending ra innocent people to prison for some reason and we don't know why and they they included you and then you escape and then some mysterious lady shoots you with a gun and gives you monstrum powers and but then but now you can't leave the city mm. and you have to you have to do different things to unlock different parts of the city i kind of like how it's a it's a small it's still a big space but it's like a more Enclosed space, I guess. There's more verticality, kind of like it's it's big. Yeah, but there's a bit more, a little more. Yeah, it's but big in different ways. It, it, somebody, I saw somebody on Twitter say, uh, "Assassin's Creed," ha, because uh, you can jump on rooftops, and there are some parts where you sneak around a little bit. But yeah, there's a so there's just this pr mysterious present and these monstrums running around and th this this mysterious lady i think her name is aprilis she's the one who gave them all their monstrum powers and and they don't know why mm -hmm. or they not that they don't know why it's to defeat these beings that pop up every so often uh called knock i think they're called yeah Nox. it's called Nox. So, yeah i'm confused on like what's called Nox and what isn't but basically it happens every so often, and you have to protect this crystal, which we don't know what the crystal does. We just know it's just the tower defense. Because there is tower defense stuff in mm -hmm. East 8, too, yeah. right? Uh, you have kind of these raid yeah. battles that pop up every now and then. Yeah, it's it's pretty much like that. But the weird thing is with, with that, there's also random... random uh, these little like black lines on the map these vertical black lines while you're walking around where where when you touch one some monsters come out and like time around them freezes because uh because regular people can't usually see these creatures yeah yeah but it's kind of like, like well what are these creatures doing why are they bad necessarily if they don't affect other things I'm, I'm only on chapter three so we don't know that much about anything yet i'm sure it, how it, it, it'll be cleared up soon yeah, although the funny thing is, you have your f like all the characters are helping you during the Noxes, mm -hmm. so sometimes it can feel really fast. Like certain enemies just take got get taken down in an instant, mm -hmm. and then the bigger enemies obviously still take a while. 
<laughs> so it's just like uh, the the balancing feels a little off, but not ter not terribly. Like it could like it feels like it could be a lot worse. Mm. <laughs> like because at first it almost feels like you don't have to do anything, but then it's like no, you do because they don't, the AI doesn't always follow the monsters while the monsters are going to attack the crystal. Yeah, it's well from playing eight, it's not like. Um, the enemies are scripted to be clever enough. Like the kind of like in Dark Souls, the enemies kind of feel sentient, where it's it's so scary that you have to be on your toes every time. But here, it's it's kind of a mix of very easy but still challenging because the enemies will still wreck you if you don't do anything or don't pay enough attention. Uh, oh yeah, for sure. I actually died. I've died once in this game. I'm playing on normal, and I've gotten close to dying a lot. But I usually have health recovery items, or like I said, I just stand away for a yeah. little bit, <laughs> or switch characters now. Since yeah, I that, that also helps. Yeah. And then there's the whole, the usual. There's the weapons and the equipment, and oh, sometimes when you defeat those monsters in those little areas, you get. A little, like a little treasure chest will pop up, and it'll have some item in it. It's usually a common item, though, mm. like something you already have. But if you have multiple characters, it's it's good to have multiple of an item, and then you don't have to buy it. And then you get you end up getting extra experience from the that battle That's too. Nice. Not a yeah. ton, but That's still. Nice. Then there's the just a like a blacksmith where you can upgrade your weapons and get new weapons, and you uh, you start a bar with Dogi just because you're stuck. Yeah. You can't you can't get out, so you might as well make the best of it. So you're usually in disguise, walking the city, unless you're on the roofs. Um, and there's oh, there's also Dogi actually. Uh, he has his little uh, support thing, is that he can help with your tower defense stuff. Like you can make he can uh, give you decoys that the monsters mm -hmm. attack instead, and you can strengthen them and stuff like that and you get the more like side quests you do the more allies you get in the dandelion which is the name of the bar mm. so you have more support options and extra features here and there yeah i'm mostly liking it for the gameplay the story again i'm early in the story and i don't expect it to be anything mind-blowing mm. but the powers are a nice touch yeah definitely <laughs> it's 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 very fun and engaging gameplay yeah. So you've been playing East 8 for... Yeah. Well, from what I saw on Twitter, you said 10 hours? Yeah, almost 10 hours. To be exact, 7.2. Uh, so going on 10. Um, I'm on Chapter 3, I think. Um, I have... For That's funny. Now, We're on the same... Did it just... Did it just take super long to, to get there? We're doing a lot of side stuff. Um... The thing is, East 8 is kind of built around both the main quest and the side quest. Like, it's not really side quests because the side quests are just branches of the main quest. Like, um, I don't know if you're familiar with the story, but it starts off with you being on a ship and then your ship being shipwrecked. So, you, oh, you have to, to that in find a survivor. That was pretty funny. Yeah, so you have to find the it survivors. Was, uh, uh huh. It was uh the the warden of the jail is like interrogating you, and she's like, "You guys shipwrecked a lot." <laughs> <laughs> and then like she she said another thing is like you you end up with these legendary weapons, and and somehow before you go on your next adventure, you always end up losing yeah. them. Yeah, it's 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 kind of like, okay. How that's it's kind of the good. setup of the whole E series. Uh, Adol goes to different places and goes on different adventures but it's it's more or less a clean slate every time so in each eight it's yeah. him trying to trying to figure out where he shipwrecked on which island um um where the survivors are and your goal is to bring them back to your main village uh and then build up that village enough so that you can um along the way build a, a boat to escape the island um so that's the general that's interesting um mm -hmm. is, am, am i using this term right like juxtaposition like like one 
Like for for that for E eight, you're fighting survivors, and there's something more you have to do. For nine, you're just uh, putting a bar together. <laughs> yeah, this is a place where you can lay low and just get some extra money. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's kind of that, but the village you're you're building is also a place where you hang out. There's there's a blacksmith or weaponsmith. There's a tailor. There's a, a doctor. Yeah. There's uh, always like a hub. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's very much a hub uh, from where you start your adventures. Um, and it's very fun and engaging because it doesn't take itself too seriously. And the only thing I can complain about is that there are sometimes too many interruptions. Because when you're once you're in the flow of things in a battle and traversal, you just want to stay in there. But then they break it up with story yeah. beats, like "Oh, there's another survivor you have to go after," and I'm like, "But I don't wanna. I just want to go explore." So it's yeah. It's, there's it's not exactly like that for me mm -hmm. but for east nine it's it's it, there's like okay i want to go to the next dungeon and fight more things that aren't just these enemies in the town because the enemies in the town right now are pretty much always the same group mm -hmm. the same types of enemies so it's like okay i want to go to the next dungeon so i could fight some yeah that's where the different types of enemies yeah. are but it's like no you got to do this and this and th this other stuff first yeah it's pretty much that because although uh huh. I did just rescue some guys, and there were some new enemies there. So I was like, okay, this is a new challenge. Good. Yeah, it's 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 also <laughs> the same with East Eight, where you go off of go on to different parts of the island, and every section of the island has different kind of uh, kinds of enemies. So it's it's very varied in that sense. Um, what I like is that it's it's very calming in a, in a certain sense it's it's very action-packed very quick yeah. pace but it's also so calming uh, like i, I kind of know what you mean it's not like you're turning your brain off but it's it's so soothing no. that you're in this flow where you're doing the combat you're dodging you're you're quick with the traversal um and you're exploring and then figuring stuff out finding new stuff uh, it doesn't like it doesn't like stress you out. Yeah, like, exactly. As like a Souls game might. Yeah, it's. It kind of makes me wish this is what they did with Ryza because I played Ryza one and it's it's great. It's fine. It's beautiful. It's 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 very calming too, but it's also very slow paced, and you don't have a sense of where the plot is going. It's always like, oh, um, go. Do this for alchemy, and go go make this, go synthesize this, and you're like, okay, but where's the urgency? What's yeah. what's my goal here? Is it just a slice <laughs> of life? Um, yeah. Where, where does East for for East Nine? There's no. No, it it it. Oh, it sorry. Go ahead. It it kind of feels like um, Ryza is a slice of life manga, and East yeah. is like your. I don't want to say generic, but it's. It's very much a comfortable shonen RPG. Uh, yeah. In a certain sense. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I feel that. With uh, with East Nine, I feel there's not that much urgency at the moment because you're just trying to figure out, and I think I already said this yeah. earlier, but you're just trying to figure out what everything is. Yeah. Wh like, wh what does this mean? Who is this lady? Why is this happening? Why but it's not like, oh, we have to. We do have to find out eventually yeah, to get out of the city, but it's like, well, we're stuck here for the time being. Yeah, so might as well make the best of it. And it, it, it's also cool that it doesn't stress, stress you out. And the thing I also like about East Eight is there's moments where East, uh, not not East, where Adol has these dreams at night about. <laughs> oh yes, the title character of East. Yeah, East. <laughs> where he gets these <laughs> dreams about Dana, which is the the. the deuteragonist of, of the game yeah and i don't know what her deal is as of yet but it's it's really enticing where you kind of want to figure out okay why is he having these dreams will i see her is it a flashback is it a flash forward what does it all mean um so that's yeah. a ni nice thing to dangle in front of players um mm -hmm. but yeah that was each eight um next to that i'm also still playing grandia hd kind of hit a wall I'm in a dungeon where 
Uh, it's it's the annoying thing you'll uh, run into with older RPGs where the dungeon doesn't have a map, so you, you kind of have trouble orientating yourself on where you should be going um, and what you've already done. Um, and Grandia is from an era where they didn't nail the the dungeon design or world design just yet because you can rotate the camera but upon rotating the camera and not having a map of the area you're kind of you, you never get a, a good grasp of of the of the place you're in so you're constantly trying to figure out okay did i go here did i get this item did i forget this item this looks familiar okay I'm backtracking. Oh, I've been here already, and it's, it kind of gets frustrating, and it it, yeah. it goes into the flow of things, and you don't want that. Um, but it's still fun, and I'm progressing mm. fairly nicely in the game. It's not that hard. It's not that stressful either. Um, though I wish they took themselves a bit seriously, because for now it's like, oh. Uh, the main character Justin, I, I'm going on an adventure, and he's never challenged in that, uh, in uh, on what that means. Or <laughs> it's like, oh, okay, sure, sure, little guy, we'll let you go on an adventure. It's not like, okay, this is a very dangerous thing a, a ten year old is going to be doing, <laughs> and it's it's kind of it's like the Pokemon world. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, fine. kind of like you can have an electric kind rat. of like that. Um, <laughs> and I've been playing not really playing um monday was my birthday and i wanted to have that moment in animal crossing new horizons where the the villagers or your islanders you didn't tell me it was your birthday i did last last week yeah you did oh well now i feel bad <laughs> no, it's, I fine, it's fine um <laughs> so i i I w- well, everybody go with Jason a belated happy birthday when you listen yeah, to this. Yeah, thanks. Um, so I, I wanted to have that moment in Animal <laughs> Crossing where they all celebrate your birthday and you get to have a piñata and cake. And yeah, that's it, nice. It, it's, also, it's also nice. So, yeah, I did that. And Nintendo sends you a cake? No, if only. <laughs> well, a digital cake in the game, but that's it. A digital cake, yes. All right, so moving on to, well, actually, I want to talk about Animal Crossing. Yeah, I have not been back to that in a while. My island is probably full of weeds. And cockroaches. And cockroaches. But last time, it wasn't actually as bad as I expected, so it's whatever. Yeah, it's not the worst thing if you if you okay, come back after on. months. Yeah. I think the, the older games are way worse than that. Oh, okay. But moving on to the... In from Japan J list where we talk about recent video game related entertainment news. Uh, first story: Netflix announces Sonic Prime 3D animated series. This is from Gamatsu, or Sao Romano, by Sao Romano from Gamatsu. After a seemingly premature announcement back in December 2020, Netflix has officially announced Sonic Prime, a new 3D animated series from Sega, Wild Brain, and Man of Action Entertainment. It will premiere in 2022. 24 episode animated adventure for kids, families, and longtime fans draws upon keystones of the brand and features the blue blur of video game fame in a high, high octane adventure where the fate of a strange new multiverse rests in his gloved hands. Sonic's Adventures is about more than a race to save the universe, it's a journey of self discovery and redemption. It may be. So people say this may have to do with the upcoming game, and there mm-hmm. there are take them take it with a grain of salt. There are leaks, uh, supposed leaks of the gameplay of the Sonic Prime game. Okay, if that's what the next Sonic game is, which is why the voice cast changed. Um, it supposedly. makes sense, but um, I don't I, I don't know if this. Is certainly true. Again, great. Yeah, because they also said it, it would um, center around multiple universes or timelines. So all the old Sonics could be making their way back in some form. So it's it's maybe not the last we've yeah. seen of Robert Craig Smith. 
Yeah, possibly. Ro oh, Roger, Roger sorry. Roger Smith. Bring back Julia White. <laughs> I'm sure you'd like that. I would like <laughs> that. All right, next story. I'm not even that big of a Sonic fan. I just like 90s things. <laughs> uh, next story. Godzilla vs. Kong, candy bars, hot sauce, and energy drinks are coming soon from official FYE. I included this because if I could get my hands on these, I'm so making a video. I mean, you can uh, try. There are three, three king-size candy bars. There's the Godzilla... Fiery Chipotle Dark Chocolate. There's a Kong Banana Crunch Milk Chocolate. And a green one that it doesn't tell you what the flavor is. So I don't know what the third flavor is. Mystery flavor. I don't know. There's there's the hot sauce, which I'm a big fan of spicy food. Mm -hmm. And I, as I said to you uh, earlier this week, this, when, when else am I going to get to try kaiju-themed hot sauce? It's perfect. <laughs> And then there's a, a, a berry blue raspberry flavored energy drink, which I'm not really that into energy drinks, but that's cool, I guess. Then we got, in more kaiju news, Pacific Rim, the black anime, will emerge from the breach in March. This is from Silicon Era, and it's by... Hang on. It's by Josh Tolentino. Mm, okay. Get ready to initiate the drift pilots. The Jaegers are back in black. More precisely, Pacific Rim the Black, which is a new anime based on the hit Kaiju vs. Robots film franchise. It is headed to streaming Titan Netflix in March 2021, on March 4th. The show was announced back in 2018 after being pushed out of 2020. It was confirmed as launch window by the teaser trailer. The Pacific Rim the Black teaser itself doesn't show too much more than is already known about the program. The kaiju are back and appear to have overrun Australia. They're emerging from dimensional bre breaches and toppling whole cities down under. A pair of siblings must come together in the drift and pilot an old battered, ja battered Jaeger across the now dangerous continent battling kaiju along the way. Pacific Rim the Black will be run by two names that should be familiar to fans of Marvel Comics, Craig Kyle and Greg Johnson. Kyle is a Marvel Comics writer and co-wrote a run, run of the X-Men comic alongside Christopher Yost. Mm. Kyle is the, also the creator of X-23, a.k.a. Laura Kinney. Kyle also worked on the three Marvel Cinematic Universe Thor films, as well as X-Men Evolution and Wolverine and, and, and the X-Men animated series. Good. Those are the two good X-Men animated series. Hot takes. Um, you know what I just thought of? Like, how every animal in Austra uh, oh. Australia is, like, a hundred times more dangerous. Like, imagine how much more dangerous the kaiju of Australia should be. Wombats versus kaiju. <laughs> uh, the series will be animated by Polygon Pictures, a Japan-based animation outfit specializing in CGI work. Polygon Pictures produce multiple CG anime shows currently licensed by Netflix, including Knights of Sidonia, Blame, Ajin the Godzilla Planet of the Monsters trilogy and Transformers War for Cybertron. Polygon can be hit or miss. Hopefully it's okay. Uh, All we saw was the humans. We didn't see any robot kaiju action yet, so that's what I'm waiting wait, for. Wait, hit or miss based on what? Like, sometimes it looks good and it looks fine, and then other times it just does not look good at all. Uh, it's that's just the nature. It, it like seems to depend on the series. It it seems to depend on the series almost. I don't think so. Maybe it's just it's it's thing. just uh, a consequence of using CG um in an animated show. The 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 technology is because they didn't do. Oh no, they didn't do that. Okay. Hmm. They didn't do the berserk thing. Did oh no. The bad berserk no, 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 no. They did not do the berserk one. Okay. Like, they said they did Star Wars, The Clone Wars, and Transformers Prime, and Tron Uprising. Yeah. Um, so the, well, the okay. Clone Wars are CG, um, but they're not shaded as yeah. as such um, in the same way as... No. <laughs> and Uprising yeah. has a very unique art style. Yeah. So I'm, I'm pretty... But yeah, the, it's, it's more the Netflix anime, CG anime style that they've been Yeah, using. I think it'll be fine. Um, well, we haven't seen anything really of consequence, so 
Uh, we'll see. Yeah, only the human faces, and that's about it. Yeah. Yeah, hopefully it's good. I love Pacific Rim, if and nobody could tell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Even the second one. I actually just recent last Friday, I showed my friends the second one, and they were like, that was fun. I don't know why. They were like, I'm not sure why people hate that movie so much. That was at least fun. And I was like, yeah, it's, right? It's fun, <laughs> but it never reaches the heights of the first one. Yeah, because that's a hard... Well, one, Guillermo del Toro didn't direct it. And two, that's a hard bar to pass. Sure, but it's... When it's not the it's, same. It's still the, it's still the bar that the, the studio put up. Uh or the, the, yeah, yeah. the franchise put John Boyega did a good job in it. Yeah, he did. Um, though his inclusion as uh, Pentecost, his son, is kind of strange when there was barely any mention of him in the first one. So it yeah. kind of felt like, oh, side story. Well, they did do a... They I think they made one, mm. actually, because I was looking up collector's editions and they did make a side story about it. Oh, well, there you go. There's there's a lot of... There's more Pacific Rim Extended Universe stuff than you would think. If I'm not mistaken, there is um, a sale on Humble Bundle for Legendary Comics. And there might be some Pacific Rim stuff in there. Why do you have to tell me that? I'm, I'm looking <laughs> it up. There's also Godzilla stuff in it. Oh, yeah, because there's a couple of tie-ins for that, too. Yeah, I'll send you the link later. Yeah, just... Yeah. Okay, so moving on to recommended content. Content other than news from the past week listed out. Links in the description. Uh, in the paste bin. Uh, PS5 and Xbox Series X shouldn't have launched in 2020 by Giovanni Colantonio for Digital Trends. Yoko Taro explains how his scenario team works on Near Reincarnation by Iane Agosa, Agosa for Dual Shockers. Game Boy Advance Imports Guides, The Best Games to Play by Graham Russell for Michibiku. Final Fantasy XIV's Warrior of Light is more than just another player avatar by Andrea Sheeran for The Gamer. Soapbox, or Soapbox, Retro Nintendo Games Cost Too Much but, but Nostalgia is Expensive by Kate Gray for Nintendo Life. Anime Impact in Given, Love is Not Linear by our friend Monty Velez for Gaming Magazine. So go check that out if you're interested in a newer anime series. And lastly, but not least, How Monster Hunter Rise Appeals to Newcomers by Ezra Crab for IGN. Nice. So now it's time for the news rundown. And this week we actually don't have any baddish news besides you know the usual well we're, the world is still technically in a pandemic yeah um, but besides that you know everything's going uh, other stuff is going all right yeah the, the only thing that broke today was that one of the co-founders of Zenimax uh passed away unfortunately that's true um, that's unfortunate robert altman if i'm not mistaken um, and he was the husband of Linda Carter, uh, who used to be Wonder Woman. Yeah. Which I never knew, mm -hmm. so. It's yeah, I didn't know that until today either. I was like, wait, what? Yeah, it's the <laughs> oddest thing of our worlds colliding. But yeah, um, mostly good news then this, this week. Um, then I guess I'll yes. start with the good-ish news. Starting off, well, actually, is, our main topic could mm -hmm. be technically framed as bad-ish news, but that, but it's the main topic for a reason. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, first up is uh, Ryoga Gotoku Studio uh, Toshihiro Nagoshi steps down as CCO of Sega. This is by Kazuma Hashimoto for Silicon Era. Sega announced through a pet. Okay, again. Sega announced through a <laughs> press release that structural changes would be happening within the company. This includes Ryo Gagotoku uh, Studios, Toshihiro Nagoshi stepping down as CCO or Chief Creative Officer of Sega. However, despite stepping down as CCO, Nagoshi will stay within Sega as a creative director. Uh, shout out to Famitsu. 
This change will take place immediately effective April 1st, 2021. This will include other structural changes within Sega, such as the reorganization of its group companies to adapt to current external environment. Excuse me. Um, Nagochi is probably most well known for the Yakuza series um, and Super Monkey Ball. So uh, there you go. If I'm not mistaken, he also worked on the GameCube's F Zero uh, GX. I have okay. no idea. <laughs> Next up is Judgment coming to PS5, Xbox Series, and Stadia on April 23rd. This is by Sal Romano for Gamatsu. Publisher Sega and developer Ryoga Gotoku uh, Studio will release Judgment for PlayStation 5, Xbox Series, and Stadia on April 23rd for $39.99, the company's announced. Judgment first launched for PS4 in December 2018 in Japan and June 2019 worldwide. The re-release will feature a 60 frames per second frame rate, improved load times, and all previously released downloadable content. Uh, yeah, check on the uh, click on the article if you want full details. Why? Why? Why is it not on PC though? Um, isn't the one on PC already unlocked for 60 frames? No, I thought Judgment isn't on PC at all yet. Wait, that that can't be true, could it? Uh, looking it up, looking it up, looking it up. Video game, okay. No, you are correct. It is not on PC yet. So I'm guessing it'll probably drop later this year or early next year for PC. I'm I fully expect it to become the Game Pass. Um, yeah, definitely. Uh, but I'm thinking usually the PC version takes uh, a bit longer to develop. Like uh, the recent Yakuza 3, 4, and 5 finally uh oh, came, yeah. Yeah, came yeah. to steam last week so it's just a and game pass and game pass yes of course so it's just going to take a while but it's most definitely coming all right so next story e6 online the arc of nafithism the arc of uh no no nafistim 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 yeah it's like nef- Nefistum. For iOS and Android launches this spring in Japan. This is from Saoramano over at Gamatsu. The recently announced mobile version of E6, The Ark of Nefistum, <laughs> is officially titled E6 Online, The Ark of Nefistum, and will launch this spring in Japan as a free-to-play title with in-app purchases, publisher Restart Games announced. E6, The Ark of Nefistum, first launched for PC in s- September 2003 in Japan, followed by PlayStation 2 in February 2005 and PSP in January 2006. The PC version was released worldwide via Steam in April 2015. Taito also released a mobile version in March 2005 in Japan. E6 Online The Ark of Nefistim is an online RPG and the first smartphone version of the game. Pre-registration is available now at the teaser website. Players will receive the following in-game bonuses based on the number of users who pre-registered. There's 50,000 silver coins, Gaia stones, chaos stones, Lydia soul card, stardust, two cookies. <laughs> two cookies. If 700,000 people pre-register, you get two cookies. That's so great. And if after 1 million pre-registrations, you get Alma's tears. Hopefully of joy. <laughs> uh, there are some key visuals here. I don't understand how it's online like what what's online about it? Um so they Test it out for PC, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, an online multiplayer suite for E8. So uh, I think mm-hmm. they're kind of. Well, E6 is the well E6 is the top the old yeah. top down style E. Right? So they're they're probably yeah, adding yeah. that functionality or so- something similar to the older title. Have you ever played any of the of the older East games before? No. Pre seven. Um, 
Uh, I, I've played a little of East Origin and Oath and Falgana, both good. Yeah, I was tempted to, to buy uh, Origins the last year uh, when it dropped on Switch, but I, I was so busy with other stuff, maybe one of these days, but Nafi Steam, Arc of Nafi Steam is the first one I'm cognizant of, uh, like way, way back, mm. but I never had a PlayStation or a, a good enough PC to play them, so... Yeah. Um, this. I mean, I had never heard of Ease as a series until like three years wow. ago. Wow. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> also, Memories of Celsetta uh, recently dropped on PlayStation Four. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's it's down to th- thirty bucks on Amazon, and you get uh, art cards and a soundtrack mm-hmm. in the package if you so like. Next up is the Atelier Mysterious Trilogy Deluxe Pack announced for April. This is by Kazuma Hashimoto for Silicon Era. Koei Tecmo Europe announced that the Atelier Mysterious Trilogy Deluxe Pack, say that three times fast, will arrive to Nintendo Switch, PS4, and PC mm-hmm. on April 22nd, 2021. Additionally, Atelier Sophie Deluxe will feature a new episode and costume. Um, the official Koei Tecmo Europe Twitter mentioned that more information will be revealed at a later date. The Atelier Mysterious Trilogy Deluxe Pack will include Atelier Firis, The Alchemist and the Mysterious Journey, Atelier Sophie, The Alchemist of the Mysterious Book, and Atelier Liddy, uh, and Swell, Sui, Sui, Swella, The Alchemist, I know it. Don't ask <laughs> <The> me. <mysterious paintings. laughs> As the title suggests, all of the included titles will be the deluxe version of the games. However, what this entails will be released sometime in the future. You can click on the article for a full breakdown of the details. Do you think you'll be jumping on this? Maybe. It's not confirmed for US yet. No, right? it's coming to the US. Don't because it was it was I thought it was Koei Tecmo Europe that don't that. worry about it it's coming to the U S though though we'll see maybe I, I don't know if anything if you if the first one you're gonna start with I'd probably advise you to go with Ryza Ryza one because that's the most streamlined mm. uh well now Ryza two is the most streamlined but Ryza is a good jumping on point. Uh, we'll we'll yeah. see, we'll see what happens. A lot yeah. of lot of other new games coming in April, so <laughs> yeah, hang on to your butts. We'll see. Uh, next up, Final yeah. Fantasy Twelve is the next Final Fantasy game on Xbox Game Pass. This is by Jenny Lada for Silicon Era. Back in January twenty twenty one. Uh, Microsoft pledged more Final Fantasy Xbox Game Pass games would show up on the platform. Now we know exactly when the next one will appear. Microsoft said subscribers will get to play uh, Final Fantasy XII The Zodiac Age on consoles and PCs on February 11th, 2021. This means only four titles are missing from the service. When Microsoft announced Final Fantasy games were on the way at XO19, uh, FFX10 and 10.2 HD Remaster, uh, FF13 and 13.2, and Lightning Returns, Final Fantasy 13 were all listed too. Excuse me. Here's the full list of February 2021 Xbox Game Pass editions. Well, I'm not going to do that. You can. They mean the ones who that have already been released on those systems, because technically there are more than that missing, right? Uh, you mean? In, but that's because they don't. In terms have, of Final Fantasy. I mean, I mean one through six. <laughs> yeah, one through six are l- kind of locked on PC or mobile. Uh, yeah, or older consoles. If- and then various spinoffs. Various yeah. spinoffs are all over the place. Yeah, but twelve is a very solid pick. It it has a great art style that holds up till this day. Uh, uh, the, the yeah, it's one of the games I need to try for. Uh- research for my sci-fi jrpg the music thing. is also great uh the gameplay uh might b- take a bit of getting used to but it's so satisfying once you get the hang of it and then you also have the the licenses and and, and the license board it's it's so good it's so good 
Isn't it Star Wars? Um, or doesn't get compared a lot to Star Wars? That's the thing. Plot wise, all of Final Fantasy is more or less based on Star Wars and then and Dungeons and Dragons. It's it's not a new concept. So, it's just this one had a more sci-fi lean to it. Um, than previous I ones. Yes, but Star Wars isn't all, even that hard of a sci-fi either. So, um. It's a spaghetti western. Uh, more or less, yes. A sp- spaghetti western with uh, <laughs> lasers. And uh, yes. I was going to say, uh, <laughs> the, the, the Evil East games, which Final Fantasy XII is, is a part of, um, were more or less spearheaded by Yasumi Matsuno. Uh, he's no longer at Square Enix. Uh, but his Wikipedia entry mm-hmm. for game design says, Matsuna stated that he is heavily influenced by Western games. He's also influenced by films, particularly the original trilogy of Star Wars films. So uh, that people have been saying for years that Final Fantasy XII is basically Star Wars. You're not wrong, but all the, the fathers uh, and mothers it's of not- Final Fantasy were influenced by Star Wars. So, hmm. yeah. It's, it's like, it's not that simple. Yeah. <laughs> okay next story Taiko no Tatsujin 20th anniversary stream will happen this month this is from Kite Stenbuck over at Silicon Era Bandai Namco will hold a special live stream to celebrate the 20th anniversary of Taiko no Tatsujin on Saturday February 20th 2021 at 1am to 3am eastern time wow <laughs> it's it's earlier in Japanese time, but the stream, will, which will be available on YouTube and Twitter, will deliver new info while looking back at the series' history. More details on the anniversary stream will be revealed in the coming days. In the meantime, Bandai Namco is currently opening applications for residents in Japan to appear on the stream and help celebrate the major anniversary milestone. This application is open for a whole week until Sunday, February 7th, 2021. Taiko no Tatsujin will officially celebrate its 20th anniversary on February 21st, 2021. The popular rhythm game franchise started when Namco launches it, launched its first arcade game iteration in 2001. Wow, I thought it was older than that. Mm. While the arcade has been receiving new upgraded versions every year, Bandai Namco has also released numerous games related to the franchise on consoles. The mainline Taiko no Tatsujin rhythm games available on current gen consoles are Drum Session for PS4, Drum and Fun for N- Nintendo Switch, and the Taiko no Tatsujin Rhythmic Adventure Pack for Switch as well. Hopefully, we, whatever they announce, we still get a localization of it. Yeah, fingers crossed. I mean, they've been ramping up the Taiko no Tatsujin games in the West as of late. Well, because they're not, they're not released that often in the first yeah, place. Yeah, but in recent years, so, Dave. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I'm sure... It's more. It's probably more likely that it, that this next thing will be localized than not. Yeah, yeah. I would hope. Next is another live stream. Grand Blue Fan. Uh, <laughs> Grand Grand, <laughs> yeah. Grand Blue Fantasy Seventh Anniversary Special Live Stream set for March Seventh, featuring update news, giveaways, and more. This is by Sao Romano over at Komatsu. Side Games will host the Grand Blue Fantasy Seventh Anniversary Special Live Stream on March Seventh from. 1800 to 2100 Japanese Standard Time. I, uh, that would be 2 to, I don't know, 2 to 5 or something? AM Eastern Time? You can Google it. <laughs> the company announced live stream links. I'm just guessing yeah, from uh, the Silicon uh, Era article that I just read. <laughs> live stream links will be shared at a later date. The broadcast will feature news on Grand Blue Fantasy 7th Anniversary Update as well as additional information beyond the 7th anniversary, giveaways, challenges, and more. Further details will be announced at a later, later date. I watched a little bit of the anime on Netflix. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, I have a friend who's like, he's not addicted to, I wouldn't say he's addicted to the mobile mm-hmm. game, but every time there's th- they have that like Guild Wars event that, he, that they do, is he's like, oh, sorry, guys, I gotta <laughs> go. I, I, Guild Wars yeah. starts. That's that's the thing with gacha games. Okay. You you can be very invested in them. But yeah, it's a cool. I I hope we see more news on what is it? Re Link or Relink? No, not Re. Uh, Relink. Yeah. 
Um, which I get confused with a different game that's been in development for a while that isn't Grand Blue. Uh, which one are you? ReFantasy? It uh, it has a similar yeah I think it's the the one. Persona teams. Uh, on, yeah, on. I think it's the the re thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's re fantasy. Uh, and and fantasy and fantasy. Yeah, <laughs> that's why I it mean it's confusing. There was also the the one from Hideo Baba, the the ex executive producer of the Tales games, which was also Project Fantasy, I think, or something like that. I'm gonna look it up. Oh real yeah, quick. It's, we need to we need. Uh, we need to have more diverse names, yeah. people. <laughs> we can't be using the same word. Uh, oh, no. It's Project Prelude Rune, but it's, it's been canceled since then. Well, that's at least a little more yeah, that, that <laughs> specific than Project Fantasy. <laughs> but, yeah. So, hopefully, we got some cool news on that. Yeah. All right. Oh, I'm also the next story. Uh <laughs> Team Ninja interested in adding open world to the next Neo game, which, as we know from a story last week, wouldn't be for a while. This is by Kite Stenbuck for Silicon Era. The latest issue of Famitsu has a special feature to mark the PlayStation 5 release of the Neo collection. It also contains an interview with Fumihiko Yasuda from Koei Tecmo's Team Ninja. Excerpts from the interview indicated that Yasuda talked about plans for a hypothetical Neo 3, including open world. In addition to the above, Yasuda also talked a bit about the new features added to the PS5 version, as well as implying that Team Ninja members have had have read many of the reactions on Neo games posted online. Here are some of the highlighted quotes from the interview with Fumihiko Yasuda. The development team really likes ego searching, so consider them to have seen most of the things <laughs> posted publicly. <laughs> there aren't too many reactions to the story, so please talk about it more. The PS5 version is filled with features we removed when optimizing the PS4 version. It will also support the adaptive trigger. If you feel like the weight is a nuisance, you can turn it off as well. Hmm. After all, it should just be enjoyed as part of the experience and performance. Neo is also a title inspired by From Software's Dark Souls series. Oh, really? I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Dark Souls has open worlds as its side aspect, and we originally planned for Neo to follow that too. But if we were to make Neo 3, we may implement open world. But I think we have to put a stop with Neo 2 for now. We have not decided on plans for another sequel. If it were to take place overseas, I think the Chinese Three Kingdoms era may also be possible. Yo, so let's says, go. A new ninja. He also says, I want to create a new Ninja Gaiden game, but we haven't gotten the go sign yet. I want to make a new game, and there are also many other projects. Yeah, they they did well, they did say during the, the New Year roundup that they're uh, announcing a lot of things this year, um, yeah. and it it leaked that a Ninja Gaiden Black or Sigma uh, trilogy collection is on its way. So maybe that's gonna be like a barometer for for to see how uh, public opinion is these days on, on Ninja Gaiden. Uh, Koei Tecmo has just been doing really well yeah. in general these past few years. Like huh? with with uh, Hyrule Warriors alone, they've made a lot of money, <laughs> and with yeah. with uh, Warriors Atelier, yeah, and in the up and the upcoming Neo. Persona Five Strikers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all good stuff. All good stuff. Okay, next and up. And also the stuff they help with, like uh, Dragon Quest Builders and and all that. Fire Emblem Three Houses. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, next up is Demon Slayer Kimetsu no Yaiba Hinokami Keputan adds PS5, Xbox One, and PC versions. This is by Sal Romano for Gamatsu. Demon Slayer Kimetsu no Yaiba Hinokami Keputan will be available for PS5, Xbox One, and PC Steam in addition to its previously announced PS4 version when it launches in 2021 in Japan, the latest issue of Weekly Jump reveals. Additionally, the magazine reveals that the game will feature a story mode in which you can experience the story, I, I mean, I guess, <laughs> attack battle mode in which you can play as various characters with simple controls. Um, there's also an update that says, here's a scan from the magazine featuring the new key visual by UFO Table and a screenshot of Tanjiro and Nezuko Kamado, Zenitsu Agatsuma, and Irosuke Hashibira. Uh... Oh, you know what's funny about that is 
I I was watching a thing by Mother's Basement and and he said uh, Ufa table. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wait, have I been saying it wrong? Because I I kept I always said UFO yes, table. Ufa table. And I was like, wait. I was like, wait, is that? Oh, <laughs> I told you. <laughs> or or no. Or did he say he said you photable? Yeah, or something. And I was like, it's wait, Ufa what? table, you <laughs> photable. It's 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 de it, it depends. Yeah, my friend and I have been pro pronouncing it as UFO table forever. <laughs> it's fine. Okay. UFO table is very good with with comp compositing uh, 2D and 3D animation. So yeah, I'm 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 really happy they did the Kimetsu no Yaiba. Are, are very disappointed. This may just be another arena fighter uh, with the tag battle mode with the tag battle mode and i'm like well not necessarily we don't know but it's more most likely that that is the case uh but cyber connect is willing to experiment with their formula so yeah i'm curious about the story mode i think if anything it's How going to be it? a very cinematic and easy to pick up game in the vein of Kakarot mm. and uh, there's also Ultimate Ninja. Uh huh. There's also another Demon Slayer game in development called something else. I think that's for smartphones. That's, I forgot what that one was. Yeah. Maybe. I'm on episode like 19, I think. Oh, you you've you know? seen the high point. Wait, it gets there's no. It, it, not not that it. it not, get not that it starts <laughs> sucking after 19, but. 1819 is the the peak of this season because of the anime. We're talking about when they're in the when they're yeah, in the forest, yeah, right? Yeah. Okay. Did did you have any any goosebumps or anything? Uh, we'll, we'll talk about it later because I want to avoid uh, spoilers. So okay, okay, it, okay. But, but um, no. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, yeah, it's happening. Every I don't know what you're referring to specifically. Every so episode we'll, we'll we every out. episode we, we we continue this podcast, I'm convinced you're from a different dimension. Look, maybe maybe you're <laughs> from a different dimension, okay? I'm just you think sure. I'm from the, the other what's it called? The Baron the Baron Stein universe and <laughs> not the Baron Stein universe? Could be, could be, man. <laughs> when the harmonic convergence happened or, or whatever. <laughs> I know that's not what it is, but <laughs> uh, next is video games helped lead Konami to a record nine months. This is by Joe Scrabbles over at IGN. Konami's digital entertainment business, which includes mobile games, computer and video games, and card games, not only propped up Konami's financial year amid the pandemic, but drove it to record high profits. In the company's latest earnings release, Konami makes clear that many of its business segments including casino gaming, sports clubs, and amusements, suffered major drops in revenue due to lockdowns and the societal effects of the pandemic. However, as we've seen across the industry, at-home gaming saw a huge boost, with Konami's digital entertainment division seeing revenue and profits grow substantially. In the nine months ending December 31st, the digital entertainment division saw 33.1% growth in total revenue and a 75.3% growth and profit year on year. The earnings release explains thus business profit, operating profit, and profit before income, ta ta income tax of Konami Group for the nine months ended December 31st, 2020, have all reached a record high. This comes despite the fact that Konami Group as a whole saw a drop of 0.6% in total revenue. Much has been made in recent years of Konami's shift away from core video game development favoring mobile and casino gaming. While mobile gaming undoubtedly played a major part in the company's recent success, Konami points to the console releases of multiple Pro Evolution soccer games, as well as the Japan-only release of the latest Momotaru Dentetsu game, a series of digital board games, which shipped 2.5 million copies as of January 2021. Looking forward, Konami points to the release of Yu-Gi-Oh! Rush Duel for Nintendo Switch and a game adaptation of sci-fi manga Eden Zero. It's that Yu-Gi-Oh! money, man. That you get all that Yu-Gi-Oh money, sure, sure. For, between duel, between uh, duel links, uh, Link Evolution, this upcoming Rush Duel, possibly an upcoming browser online game, finally an official one. <laughs> There's a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh on its way. I mean, yeah. Uh, the di uh, uh. Oh, I was gonna finish. No, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, 
Uh, the digital entertainment division's success is interesting in light of Konami's recent restructure. The company recently announced that it will dissolve into three production divisions, leading some to speculate that the company would no longer produce games. Konami denied that idea, telling IGN that was in fact made to allow games to be made more efficiently at the company. If you can make more uh, Yu-Gi-Oh games more efficiently, or better, that would be great. Yeah. Uh... What were you going to say? I was going to say, let's see, Yu-Gi-Oh! started in 1996. It is now 2021. Well, Isn't that like... Well, 1996, well, you got to remember, Yu-Gi-Oh! wasn't the first year or so of the... Yu-Gi-Oh! didn't always revolve around the card game the first year or so. No, that's true, but it being the 25th... And it was only an because it was so popular. It No, I mean, but it being the 25th anniversary, they might be gearing up a new... Uh, entry in the franchise like a series and a game yeah so, well uh, they have a new series they have a they premiered mirrored a new series last year right that's what a uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! sevens is no i mean beyond sevens hmm. i would love a i don't know how it would work but mm. i would have loved a Yu-Gi-Oh! a Yu-Gi-Oh! series in the vein of dragon ball super <laughs> where it's <laughs> still the the older character is just going on more adventures for a little while. Hmm. And yes, it wouldn't have Yami slash Atem, so it would be not that, I mean, but it would have everybody else. I mean, isn't that basically what the the, the, the last game was? The movie, you mean? Oh, the movie? I mean. That's what the movie was, but give me a series of that. <laughs> not a retelling. Not a retelling. God, no. Oh, you know they're just going to retell it. I don't Look, I don't need to know how Kaiba built his space elevator. Oh, they're going to show you every angle of that. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't see any Next up that. is Square Enix financial report reveals significant sales and growth. This is by Kazuma Hashimoto for Silicon Era. Square Enix released its latest financial report, which revealed a significant increase in sales and growth for the econ—no, not economy, <laughs> for the company. <laughs> Imagine Square Enix being responsible for the whole economy. This report covers the period of time between April 1st to December 31st, 2020. Additionally, the report mentions that strong sales for Final Fantasy VII Remake helped bolster the revenue increases for the company. Shout out to Famitsu. In regards to Square Enix's MMORPG department, Square Enix saw sales for Final Fantasy XIV and Dragon Quest X decline. However, the profit for both titles grew due to revenue generated by their subscription-based services. I mean, it's, it's inevitable because people will think, oh, it's too late to jump into an MMORPG, but... Final yeah. Fantasy fourteen is very accessible, so uh, jump it's in. It's never too late. Yeah, jump in whenever you want. And you can always pay extra to jump ahead if you so wish. Yeah. Um, continuing. Additionally, profits for Square Enix Mobile Division continues to grow. Titles such as War of Divisions, Final Fantasy Brave, Exvius, Dragon Quest Tact, and Octopath Traveler, Conquerors of the Continent, have performed well. Profits for Square Enix's mobile titles have continued to grow on a year-on-year -year increase. Overall, the various game-based divisions in Square Enix are performing strongly. Um, and the final paragraph says, Unfortunately, due to the situation surrounding COVID-19 and state of emergency in Japan, amusements business, uh, amusement business has seen a significant decrease in profits over this period of time. Excuse me. This includes Square Enix operated stores such as the Square Enix store and cafe locations. Due to this, Square Enix's amusement-based businesses are currently struggling. That's it. Hmm. Next story. Yeah. Uh, PlayStation 5 sales reach 4.5 million units worldwide. This is also by Kazuma Hashimoto for, you know it, Silicon Era. Uh, wait a second. Sony released its financial report for the third quarter of 2020, revealing that 
PS5 sales have hit 4.5 million units worldwide as of December 31st, 2020. Additionally, users subscribed to the PS Plus subscription-based service has risen significantly. This has helped bolster profits for the company alongside the release of several strong selling titles. Shout out to Famitsu and Zuj EX, which if I'm not mistaken, that's Daniel Ahmad. Uh, yeah, Daniel Ahmad. Uh, these titles include The Last of Us Part 2 and Ghost of Tsushima, which helped contribute to Sony seeing increased profit during the third quarter. Despite the scarcity of the PS5, sales for the console mirrored that of PS4 in 2013 during its third quarter, with both consoles mm. selling roughly 4.5 million units. And yet I can get one. Answer me that, Sony. Somehow. Well, <laughs> it, remember, it, Mi, Mi, MiHoYo took all of them. Yeah, exactly. Or at least a lot of them. <laughs> I'm baffled by that image. That's okay. That... That's okay. I'm okay with them, uh, you know, giving their work. Uh, no, their their employees. You know, rewarding their yeah. workers for doing a good job. Yeah, it's better than scalping. <laughs> exactly. Additionally, other sectors contributed to profit gains within the company. Aniplex, a Japanese music and animation company owned by Sony, grew in significant profits with the release of Demon Slayer: Kimetsu no Yaiba Mugen Train. This film broke several box office records in Japan before finally dethroning Studio Ghibli's or Ghibli's Spirited Away as the highest grossing film in Japan of all time. Uh, final paragraph says, alongside this, mobile titles that operate under Aniplex such as Fate Grand Order and Twisted Wonderland are performing well. Sony's music division Wait, also saw a gain in profit. That's weird. Over- uh-huh. What's weird? Twisted Wonderland is a Sony game? Uh... Are you familiar it's owned with by that? Disney. I, I mean, it's a Disney game. It's it's Disney. It's a well, Disney thing. It's produced by Aniplex. Like it's it's probably a joint venture between and Disney and Sony, Sony. So it's a yeah, mm-hmm. yeah like Spider Man. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, uh, and that was it. All right. So next story is. And I know this, this is going to sound like we have a lot of sales news, but there's a reason. <laughs> yeah, there's a financial reason. reports, baby. Pokemon Sword and Shield is the best-selling Pokemon since Gold and Silver. Take that, uh, angry by... Redditors and Interneters. Matt Perslow for IGN. Nintendo's latest earning reports show that Pokemon Sword and Shield have sold over 20 million units, making it the best-selling Pokemon game since Gold and Silver, and the first game since that generation to pass 20 million copies sold. As noted by Serebii, Pokemon Sword and Shield has now sold 20.35 million units, with 1.3 million of those being sold in the past three months, Q3 2020. Those figures put it as the first Pokemon game to achieve more than 20 million copies since Gold and Silver, which sold... 23.73 23.73 million copies following its launch in 1999. It's also the third best-selling Pokemon game of all time, behind Gold and Silver and Red, Green, and Blue. Since Gold and Silver, Pokemon sales have remained largely consistent, at least as far as the initial game launched in the gen- in a generation, but all have sold within the 15 to 17 million region. The huge popularity of Sword and Shield marks a landmark game for the series, then. No doubt such figures are in part thanks to the mass popularity of the Nintendo Switch itself, which has now eclipsed the sales sales of the Nintendo 3DS. As well as being the third best-selling Pokemon game, Sword and Shield is the fifth best-selling game on Switch. I think the DLC really helped. Oh, I'm sure. Pokemon Home plus the DLC probably helped a lot. Plus, being in the pandemic, maybe people were like, People might have been itching for a new Pokemon game and were finally like, you know what? Now that po- Pokemon Sword and Shield, they have their full content, I guess I'll get it. The, the thing I wanted to say was this is like the biggest sign to developers of to continue or to continue uh, on the path that they were on. So if you thought that all your <laughs> complaining about how Nintendo is ruining Pokemon, newsflash... <laughs> It's all our fault. So. <laughs> they don't think so. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much, pretty much. It's it's your <laughs> like 
Um, we as as gamers, as as commenters, have the tendency to think that we know what is the best thing, and that the developer should be replicating the best thing. But to the developers and publisher, what sells the best is objectively the best thing. Uh, so. I'm guessing Sword and Shield too. Uh, we have some uh, breaking news, real quick. Uh, not really breaking; it's from like 30 minutes ago. But um, SNK versus Capcom match of the millennium, uh, uh, a port of a Neo Geo Pocket Color game, will be on the Nintendo Switch eShop on February 17th. Okay, there you go. That's cool. The one SNK game that I that I would maybe get because but it's because of capcom mm. i mean we cover japanese game show it's it's kind of whatever if we buy them or, or cover them it's we have to yeah, it's not like just the the just the you know the the one problematic element in <laughs> in the whole snk situation you mean all the murder <laughs> I mean the the guy yeah the dude who owns such a big share of it but yes oh boy uh, I'm oh sure boy. the rest of SNK aren't yeah you know I mean I, I imagine a shareholder meeting should be fun now like uh, I wonder why we're not selling well these days <laughs> oh yeah wait a minute <laughs> <laughs> okay. Next up is uh, Nintendo reveals Switch sales have surpassed 79 million consoles worldwide. This is by Kazuma Hashimoto. No, 70. Wait, 79? Yeah. 74. The headline says 79. Oh, that's weird. Why did it. I don't know why it turned into 74 when I did the link there. That's. Odd. Wait, it, 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 I think. All right, I corrected okay. it. Um, this is by Kazuma Hashimoto for Silicon Era. In a new financial report, Nintendo has disclosed that the Nintendo Switch console has surpassed 79.87 million sales worldwide. About 74 million of those were purchased by consumers. So wait, what does that mean? Who who bought the other 5 million? Uh, um, everybody else. Okay. That's still... Oh, whatever. Due to this, Nintendo has raised its expectations for full year Switch sales. The company has already surpassed its original projection of 24 million units. It's now expecting Nintendo Switch console sales to rest somewhere between 26 million units by the end of March. Shout out to Bloomberg and Games Industry. You know, the funny thing is when, like, 2019, they projected 24 million units, we were all like, ugh. That's that's too optimistic, man. Yeah. Settle down. It's never gonna happen. And then everything uh -huh. happened, uh, and now they're selling like hotcakes. I can't even imagine how much they're selling. Anyway, additionally, President Shuntaro Furukawa, uh, the Nintendo. Wait, that's structured odd. Additionally, President Shuntaro Furukawa said that Nintendo now has a sufficient component supply for uh, for now, despite industry-wide shortages, which means more Nintendo Switch consoles will be in production. The console had previously become hard to obtain, specifically around the time of Animal Crossing New Horizons hit the market. The game had effectively become a smash hit overnight, with sales surging after its release. As it stands, Animal Crossing New Horizons is the highest selling title in the series to date. Other smash hits for the console have included Ring Fit Adventure and Super Mario 3D All-Stars. You can click on the article for full details. And if I'm not mistaken, Animal Crossing New Horizons is the second best selling Nintendo game for the Switch. Uh, uh, the IGN one said... Uh, what, what did it say? It's right below Mario Kart 8. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Imagine. We, we live in a world where Animal Crossing is more valuable than Pokemon. On a Switch, at least. For now. Yeah, for now. Uh, for now. <laughs> <laughs> Next up is Nintendo not planning to announce a new Switch model anytime soon. Uh, I have thoughts. This is by Joe Scrabbles for IGN. 
Nintendo has reportedly said that it isn't planning to announce a new model of Switch anytime soon. In an investor Q&A following the announcement of Nintendo's latest earning report, Bloomberg's Takashi Mochizuki reports that Nintendo President Shuntaro Furukawa was asked whether the company would announce an upgraded model of the Switch. His response, not anytime soon. That response has immediately led to discussion of whether it is or isn't a clue as to a future announcement. It's just Nintendo saying anything and the rest of the internet is like, yeah, we have other ideas. Yeah. Previously, Nintendo has offered more concrete denials of a new model, and Furukawa's apparent phrasing here leaves the door more open to an announcement at a later date. Click on the article for full details. They'll announce it when they announce it. Yes. People uh, are going to kind of be patient. But um, a person, a very uh, prominent person I'm following on Twitter, seems to be suggesting that April is the day you should, or the, the time frame you should be looking forward to. Not saying, the entire not saying, day of April? No, no <laughs> it's just around okay. April. That's when <laughs> Q1 or Q4? No, it's when Q4 ends um, of the last year and Nintendo will then most likely be revealing its, its kind of big push Slight. for the rest of its Yeah, slate. for the rest of the year. Or for the new year. Uh, a lot of people are getting very hungry for a Nintendo Direct, too. Listen. Even though Nintendo, we haven't really seen a Nintendo Direct, Direct, like... A proper Direct. More partner Directs like, and indie Directs. I feel like since the Monster Hunter games were announced... Listen. We haven't seen it's one. It's a pandemic. People are doing their best. Yeah. Let them do yeah. their best. Yeah, and they're just separating the things by games. Like, oh, here's a Mario Direct and a Pokemon Direct, and and that's all well and good, you know. Yeah, I'm fine okay. with that. But people want a, like an actual everything combined together in Nintendo Direct, just so they can complain but, afterwards. So uh, I guess keep your eyes peeled for April. Yeah, just so they can complain afterwards. One more thing uh, I want to say about Nintendo is, due to the pandemic, they've been selling out of Switches relatively every day or every every so often um so the demand is high and as long as the demand exists for the current switch they have no incentive to replace that with a newer model or a different model um so that might have shifted the time frame a bit towards later this year so yeah, take that for what it is. Um, final story is Nintendo is replacing its multiplayer server system dating back to the Wii U and 3DS era. This is by Liam Doolin for Nintendo Life. Let's be real. Nintendo's online service hasn't always been the best. While it's always worked, <laughs> it has not always necessarily been a completely stable experience across every game. While we won't name any specific titles, you probably already know the ones that haven't run quite as smoothly as others. Excuse me. With this in mind, it seems Nintendo's online service uh, are, or services are finally getting an update of sorts with data miner Oatmeal Dome via ThomasNet underscore MC detailing how Nintendo will be replacing its multiplayer server system, which has been around since the Wii U and 3DS era. Is doing this by swapping from NEX to a newer system called NPLN. The recent Monster Hunter Rise demo was the first game to make use of the NPLN and was apparently a great way to test out how it worked under pressure. Wait, remind me again. Wasn't that the demo that kind of had issues because of the online? So, not a, not a great first showing. Wait, what game? Monster Hunter Rise demo. Oh, yeah. So it's not a not a great first showing, but Capcom is hoping it'll be they'll figure it out. Uh, fingers crossed. Uh, so yeah, um, hopefully this means that the online will be better, and also the the source I am vaguely referencing uh, said that this is also a hint of things to come for April. 
and that was that. Hmm. So, the, our main topic, and I'll put this on the thumbnail, is Nintendo has almost completely pushed Sony out of Japan. There have been reports about PlayStation or Nintendo Switch outselling PlayStation and uh, Sony's PlayStation Japanese strategy not doing so hot the past few years, mm -hmm. despite like games still being made for it. Uh, and we'll go on with the article by Rebecca, Rebecca Smith for PlayStation Lifestyle. The decline of PlayStation in Japan has been known about for a little while, but a new report has revealed Nintendo has almost completely pushed PlayStation out of the Japanese market. According to News Post 7, the Nintendo Switch is completely dominating hardware and software so sales, with PlayStation 4 barely getting a look in and PS5 nowhere to be seen. Hideki Yasuda, a senior analyst at the ACE Economic Research Institute, revealed the COVID-19 pandemic had a large impact on hardware and software sales in Japan. Demand for both Nintendo Switch and PlayStation 4 was increased as people found themselves in lockdown. However, the Switch benefited the most as a console that can either be played on a large screen with family or as a handheld device in another room. Sales of the Switch remain strong. The console has sold 18.88 million units in Japan over its lifetime, making up just under 25% of the global sales. Between November 2020 and January 2021, the Switch sold 1.72 million units, an increase of 9% from the same period last year. Sales figures from Famitsu have shown the Nintendo Switch counting for 91% of Japanese hardware sales during the holiday period. On the other hand, PlayStation 4 made up just 4.7%, while PlayStation 5 clocked in at 3.7% during its launch period. The Japan software charts don't look much better. In the top 30 games between December 28th and January 30th, as reported by Famitsu, Switch games took up 29 of these slots, with sales totaling over 2 million. The remaining slot went to Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War on PlayStation 4, and it sold slightly more than 21,000 titles. There were no PlayStation 5 games in that chart. These small figures aren't helped by Sony discontinuing production of the PS4 Pro and all but one of the slim models. Demand for the latest PS5 console is also far outstripping supply. Retailers have resorted to selling the con consoles via lottery system, while a recent restock in Tokyo ended in pandemonium and police brought in to control the chaos. Despite this, Sony continues to maintain Japan is of utmost importance to the company and they're not sidelining them in favor of the more lucrative Western market. Only time will tell whether or not an improved supply of PS5 hardware will manage to improve PlayStation's share in the Japanese market. I think part of this is just because we're in that transitional period with P between PS4 and PS5. And there aren't, like, a lot of PS5 exclusive games that are, you know, Japanese, Japan developed mm -hmm. are still in development. So that's that is definitely a part of it. Um, and Like Final you know, Fantasy 16, what's going to happen when that comes out? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's also something we've talked about a lot on the podcast. It's <clears throat> probably due to smaller living spaces in metropolitan areas in, in yeah. Japan. Um, mm -hmm. Like we keep referencing that, but we should still uh, find a solid source for that. But um, yeah, the, the, I mean, we know several people who have lived in Japan before. Yeah. So <laughs> the, the story goes, you don't have we can ask them. Yeah, the story goes, you don't have a lot of space in metropolitan areas, so you kind of uh, have to make do with what little you have. And if you have like this ginormous uh -huh. electronic device in your living room, taking up like half of half of the space available, it's it's not a, a good fit. Good amount of shelf space. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's also expensive. It's a pandemic. There aren't any real big exclusives. Yeah, Switch is, Switch is more affordable, has more exclusives right yeah. now. Huge library and, oh, and of new games, and, and you games. also have the light version, so you don't have to have the the, yeah. the quote unquote core Switch uh, console. And I also think nostalgia plays a big role because parents will be looking at Nintendo and seeing a portable and thinking, "Oh, I used to have a Game Boy. I can get my kid that." Um, so that makes a good run for Christmas and Christmas gifts. Yeah. Um, well. Japan doesn't really do Christmas in, in that sense. Um, but there's that. And I, I Nintendo's think... just a lot better at 
allocating consoles to yeah. Japan than、uh, PlayStation has. Because from everything we've seen Sony doing as a corporation, is that they're steadily going from Japan to a Western、uh, styled company.、Um, And they're not abandoning Japan because heaven forbid they say that.、Um, no. Because they're also very big on tradition and they will not abandon their tradition.、Um, but they didn't allocate. But understandably. Yeah. They didn't allocate enough. A lot of people are worried. Yeah, they didn't allocate enough units for Japan and it's showing. And they don't really have much to show for it besides, oh, we have a collection of PS4 games that you already probably own on your PS4, which hasn't already、yeah. been selling that well in Japan. So,、uh -huh. yeah, it's, it's a combination of all these factors. What do you think Sony could do to kind of salvage all of this? Or do you think it's just a matter of well, time?、Um, I mean, before, I think it's just a matter of h o n e s t l y Yeah, I think it's just a matter of time. Because,、mm. you know, like I said, Final Fantasy 16, that's going to be a huge one. And then. Well, I can't think of anything else specific. There, there's other stuff that I don't. I'm curious to know how popular. Final Fantasy 14 is popular in Japan, but I'm curious to know what platforms. People play it on.、Over、um,、there. I'm guessing. Because I don't know if PC, but I don't know if they have enough room or. Well, it can run on some lower end PCs pretty well. Yeah, it's, it's not the most demanding game, and it's also on PS3 and PS4, so you basically have, a, have the. It still looks decent. Yeah, so it, it, it depends on what's your preference and what you have available in your home. But think about, but again, six, again going back to 16, yeah, it's, it's you know, that team that did 14, and with the popularity of 14, I think that could really help、uh, PS5 sales. Yeah. I, I don't know how much. I, I think we're also forgetting one important thing、um, the, the mobile platform. Has carved out a large piece of the pie in the world、yes. as of late. Everyone has access to a mobile phone.、Uh, having a switch as a mobile device is also a lot easier. So, people in Japan might be migrating to different platforms because it's easier to use.、Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm also curious to see if they make a smaller model of the PS5 in the future, if that sells better.、Uh, I don't think we'll be seeing that until year three. It won't be for a while. Yeah, yeah it won't be for a while.、Yeah. But I, again, they, not, they have time. This, this thing just came out in November, and we're the world is still currently in a pandemic. I mean, things、yeah. are getting better slowly but surely, but we're still. You know, in it. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I'm thinking by year three when the Slim, the PS5 Slim is out, maybe that'll be when I have the chance of buying the fat PS5. And maybe things will have balanced out a little more. <laughs> Hopefully. Or at least, if, like, because I don't expect it to beat Switch sales, but at least、uh, I expect sales to get better over time with. Once more games are more new games are available. Yeah. They just have to have an incentive to, to play them, and the increased prices aren't that big of an incentive. So, yeah, Next yeah. Gen has、uh, a tough road up ahead, but if the PS4 and the Xbox One are any indication, they can still turn that fortune around. Yeah, my PS5 has been great. I think it only. It only ever crashed once, and I forgot why. Because <laughs> you didn't turn it off properly? I, no, it was,、uh, it was something else. Okay. I, I can't remember if I was playing something, but I was like, oh, it crashed. That's the first time that's happened. And it wasn't like I was in a game at a, a specific point and like, oh no, I forgot to save and I lost all my save. It wasn't like that or anything. Okay. It was kind of like. Oh, whoops. That's weird. Yeah. Okay, whatever. Moving on. Turn it back on. Make sure it's okay. Okay, we're good. And then it never happened again. <laughs> Unlike my Xbox. But that's. You still that's ha haven't gotten、day. that fixed? 
Nope. Hmm. And I'm not going to for a while. <laughs> All right. But I don't need to for a while either. You know, I got Game Pass on PC. I got my PS5. I got my Switch. Yeah. I got my PC. I'm pretty set. Yeah, I also just built a, a budget gaming PC. Um, oh, you did? Yeah, well, uh, it started Another around did too. Christmas, uh, Black Friday last year. And I just got my graphics card, a GTX 1650. It's not the greatest and most glamorous, yeah. but it was what was available and relatively Something. within MSRP range. So I snatched it as soon as it was available. Mm. Yeah. As long as it's decent, it's fine. Yeah. Uh, a friend of mine, she just finally finished building her PC too. And she had the... I feel like she's had the, the at least she had the PC like shell built mm -hmm. for like three years and then like just never did anything with it and she had the parts and she's like like uh, a day or two ago she's like oh, I finally finished it and then she's like Steam won't let me play games and I'm like that's weird <laughs> that's really weird maybe she needs to update it or something we haven't figured out what the issue yeah we we're, we're hoping it's probably an easy fix but it's like it's one of those things where we haven't helped her with it yet just because, you know, um, she has work and mm. everybody else is busy. So we, we haven't all had time to get together and figure out the issue. But it's, yeah, like, yeah. not really a, a rush. There, There's no rush to it. So it's just kind of like, I was just kind of like, that's a funny, that's odd. Huh. What a weird problem to have. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, hopefully... Getting back to the main topic, hopefully we see PlayStation make a comeback in, well, not the next few months, but in the next year or two, I yeah, guess. Yeah, they'll be fine. And if if Japan won't be the, the breakthrough success that they thought it was, at least they have the West. Because people are, people are like worried that, oh, Japanese developers, they're going to stop developing for PlayStation now. And I'm like, I don't. I don't know about that. No, uh, <laughs> I don't think that works. As long that as way. the tools are available, they'll do it, and as long as there's a market yeah. to buy the games, they'll do it. Yeah. So, uh, I think that's it. We have no listener. Qu we really need to get better at grabbing listener questions. I don't know why we haven't had any for a while. I mean, but, I, I think uh, we 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 say enough and we explain yeah. our topics well enough that. People don't have questions. But I want to believe I just like that. having them once in a while. <laughs> I like having them once in a while, sometimes when they're just random stuff about anime or something. That's uh, Those are always fun. I mean, I'll, I'll pitch you something that, that, we, can, that we can maybe consider for, for the next episode. Okay. okay. Uh, all right. So that's it for this week. Remember to be kind to each other the most important thing and then uh wear a mask wash your hands play video games play video games watch anime there was something else but i forgot what it was be kind uh, i saw i said that first okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think that's that's it that should cover all the bases yeah i think we, we should, i think we, we got everything fun. covered yeah i think we got it yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this has been Errol, this has been Jason. Thank you for joining us this week, yep. and we'll see you next time. Yeah. Matinee.